What's up guys? Today we're going to be checking out the JVC Exofield Personal Theater Headphones. Alright guys, if you're new to the channel and you love home theater and new movies, be sure to tap the subscribe button for new weekly content. Alright, so let's get these things unboxed. As these are called, the Exofield Theater. These are... Uh, JVC headphones, which is supposed to give you a Dolby Atmos DTS-X theater experience. Inside the box, we have power cord, power brick, 3.5 millimeter cable, and micro USB cable. I do find this a little odd since this is a micro USB cable. You would think being 2021, 2020, that this would be USB-C. I think that's a little strange omission since everything's from like mobile devices and everything else is kind of transitioning over to USB-C. Little carry bag. Nice, nice and white. Here are the headphones. So these look like to be pretty nice sized. They have a metal band, which look to be pretty, pretty robust. Should be able to Fit those over your, your big head if you got a big head. It's got a nice uh, kind of a, it's not leather, like a leatherette, rubberish feel here for a pad for comfort. The drivers in them are 40 millimeter neodymium drivers. They are labeled right and left. And these are over your ear, so they should fit over your ear. At least they fit over my ear pretty comfortably. And they do kind of isolate. They isolate pretty well, just on their own, just on their own. Comfortable. They're pretty comfortable. Now this could be a problem for some, but I have these already pulled down all the way, and they don't seem to be able to pull down any further. So I mean, if you have a really big head, I think you might have a problem fitting these over your head. But for somebody kind of like an average size head, I feel like my head is average. It feels pretty nice. Uh, build quality is plasticky, nice quality plastic though, it is pretty, pretty thick feeling. For controls, we do have the power button on the left side. And we have the charge port on the bottom. On the right ear side, we have the volume, which is touch sensitive. The exo field button. There's the input button, and then there is the setup. But nice quality though, got nice little chrome, black chrome accent, nice exo field accent on the top. Otherwise, kind of a kind of a plain design. Here's the transmitter, which would basically kind of act as a almost like a receiver, like your home theater receiver would act. But here, let's take a look up front. There is set a button up front there which i think is for the 3.5 jack or 2.5 mil jack on the top we have the power button input selector your sound mode which is cinema music game and custom and then you have your user data we have a couple of uh, LED readouts here, which will tell you what input you're on. There's HDMI 1, 2, 3, digital or analog or Bluetooth. And then your sound fields, which are cinema, music, game, custom, and whether or not you're listening to Dolby Atmos or DTS-X. So little call outs there. Around back, you've got your three USB, or you got your three HDMI inputs. There's EARC out, three HDMI ins, Optical in out, that's your analog, and then your power connection. And there's nothing else on the sides or on the bottom. Oh, actually, no, there's something on the bottom. On the bottom, there are some analog attenuators. And if you want to turn on and off, HDMI CEC. So that's a pretty cool feature. And on the top, you do get the Exofield Insignia logo there. So what we're gonna do is get this thing hooked up in the theater and we'll give you some thoughts and impressions. So to get this thing set up, all you have to do is plug in the power cable, 
I'll be using a Roku into HDMI 3. And then from the JVC, I'm going to go out from ARC into the LG HU810 projector. Next thing you're going to have to do is download the ExoField app from the App Store. It's available for both Android and for iOS. Open the app and it'll tell you to go into your phone's Bluetooth settings and connect to the JVC. Next, you're going to click Start Matching and the app will take a measurement to fine-tune the headphones to your room. But before you hit Start, you'll have to take the 2.5mm cable and plug it into both the transmitter and into the headphones where it says Setup. Now put the headphones on and make sure it's quiet before hitting Start. Once that's all done, it'll transfer the data over to the headphones. You can store up to four measurements, which I'd advise doing because some measurements could sound better than others. Now once that's all done, from the home screen you can select your input. You can see where it says decode. We're listening to some Dolby Atmos right now. In the center here you can see what channels are active, which is 7.1.4. Under sound mode, you got a few presets. You've got flat, cinema, music, game, and custom. And here's where you can edit your own custom curve, which this is what I found sounded the best, at least for my ears. Backing out of that, this is where you would turn on exo field. So if you were listening to just two channel, five channel, or seven channel, it would play through the headphones exactly how it is. But if you want to turn on Atmos or DTS-X, then you're just going to have to tap on exo field. And you can see that all the channels are all lit up. Then up in the corner here, you've got your battery life, which is at 80%. I think you're supposed to get something like 10 hours. I let it play for a few hours and I think I got about eight hours or so. Maybe, maybe a little bit more or less depending on how loud you actually have the volume. By hitting the gear up in the upper right corner, you got your exo field set up. This is the first measurement that we took. You can add up to six more, or you can register up to six more rather. And for user data is where you'll have your four presets. Exo field matching is where you're just gonna rerun the whole measurement calibration thing all over again. Under sound setup is where you have channel gains for center channel, which is either plus six or negative six. And then LFE, same thing, negative six, plus six. For balance, you got left and right balance. Sound mode, that's your sound mode once again. Surround setup, you can turn on or off Neural X or Dolby Surround up mixing. And you can pick your default surround up mixing format that you would like, either Neuralex or Dolby Surround, if you're listening to two channel sources. And under decode setup, you've got dynamic range control, off, on, or on auto. And there's also dynamic range control for DTS as well. All right, so the first demo that I put in is uh, Ready Player One, the car race scene, which is like demo worthy. Everything comes from every speaker, above you, all around you. Great sound effects. And we're about to kick off the race right now. And I can hear Bigfoot driving past my right ear. Motorcycle, DeLorean, going past the other ear. You can hear the little debris and the little coins sprinkling across the bottom of the street. Cars whizzing by left, right. Good bass too, really good bass. They hear um, Parzival is talking to H and the vocals, the vocals do sound like they're coming from the, they do sound like they're coming from a center channel. When I first played this demo, the default channel gain was set at zero for the center. So it would really push up the dialogue more to the sides of the speaker. I found if I turn the, down the center channel gain, to maybe like a negative five, that it, it, it pushes out the center channel more forward so it sounds more like it's out in the room rather than inside your head. Here are the coins just sprinkling all across the road. Sounds really cool. That sounded like a legit came from the back rear speak, back rear left speaker. The big ball just like kind of zipped across my face. Tyrannosaurus Rex, that was cool. Kong kind of jumps from over here across your face. You can hear him jump above your head there, like his voice, like the growl comes above your head. 
the only thing this is missing is just the tactile feel of the bass. Because the bass, you can feel the bass pressurize, pressurize your ears. You just can't feel it on your body. Now this is a good scene. This part, Kong sounds like he's running behind your head, over to the front, and then he jumps down. Jumps down from top left, front of your face. That sounded really cool. Like I've seen, I've seen this scene so many times on my actual home theater with separate speakers. And while it doesn't, while it doesn't exactly sound perfect, once you get your kind of, once you get engrossed into the movie, you can pick out the individual sounds as they're moving across the soundstage. It's not always like perfect sounding, but you do get that feel that it's kind of coming from in that particular area or right above that particular speaker or the upper right top speaker. So you, you will get the sensation of that. I mean, that part where Kong runs behind your head, that sounded, that sounded really good. It sounded like eerily like it was in your head, but yet outside of your head at the same time. So it can be a little jarring that it sounded that good. Like I said, I mean, if I, I have some butt kickers, I've got some seat actuators actually from Croson, which I wanted to, to add to the whole experience so you could actually hear it in your head and feel it in your seats. But I couldn't figure out a way to get the, the Croson's to hook up to the, to the transmitter, to the JVC transmitter. Otherwise, I think that would have been like a, a cool tactile feel within the seats and then hearing the pressurized bass in your ears. Fortunately, I couldn't do that. Like I said, as far as like dialogue wise is concerned, if you go inside the app, there are some channel controls, some channel gains you can change. You can change the LFE and the, and the center channel. At its default setting, it sounded more like it was like right here, kind of coming from the side of your face. Uh, whereas if you, if you turn down the channel gain, it, it, takes the, it takes the vocals and pushes them more forward. So it sounds more like it's in the room rather than right at your head. So I mean, uh, there is a little bit of reverb, a little bit of echo as you're watching that, that kind of comes from the voice from the center channel, but it does kind of make it sound like it's got a bigger space up front. I should also mention that if you're swiping up and down for the volume, the volume does show on the screen, so I'll let you know what the volume control is at. Um, but like I said, um, I have heard some things about dialogue not being so great with these headphones. Out of the box, no, it didn't sound that great. You will have to take maybe uh, multiple measurements to get the sound just right. You're gonna have to sit with the headphones on your head. Quiet room as possible, maybe go, maybe take a couple measurements it can hold up to four presets. That's where that little button is up on the top. You can press the button. It'll cycle through one, two, three, four. Um, pick the one that sounds the best. Not every movie is going to sound like Ready Player One. Some movies just don't sound that great. Um, I find if you're watching stereo content on like Netflix, that's only like two channel, or if you're playing like two channel music or something like from like YouTube, I found that the up mixing doesn't work so well. I would preferably turn off the exo field and just listen to it in two channel stereo mode where it's more direct in your ear just left and right um, but as far as like if you're up mixing five channel to seven channel then it works pretty well it's not as convincing as an actual atmos mix but it still kind of gives you like a sensation of stuff going above your head more like a like a bubble of sound rather than being more directional so if you want to just listen to it in like straight five channel seven channel Within the settings, you can either turn off Dolby Surround Up Mixing or DTS and Neural X Up Mixing. Like I said, for regular five channel, seven channel mixes, I would prefer to turn that off and just kind of hear it as it is. But for Dolby Atmos DTS X stuff, I think it sounds fantastic. Could the quality of the drivers be a little better? If I'm listening to just like music, if I was playing like Tidal from the Apple TV compared to like some regular headphones like my my mdr 3s from sony which are like 300 bucks i would say just for regular straight music listening i kind of do prefer just the regular stereo from my normal headphones since they're more of like a hi-fi headphone but as far as like dsp wise making it sound like you have a movie theater in your head then these definitely sound a lot better as far as like two channel wise though i, I would prefer my regular two channel headphones now at the time of this video, these headphones do cost a thousand dollars. I would say if you're gonna purchase these just for like music listening, two channel only, probably not worth it. 
But if you are someone that loves movies and you want to stay up late, you don't want to disturb your neighbors, your kids, your family members, then I think these do put out a phenomenal sound. It's not a replacement for a whole home theater system, but you do get a pretty good approximation of what an immersive soundtrack sounds like. It doesn't always sound great on every movie. It really depends on how well the mix the movie is. But for the majority of the stuff that I listened to, I thought I had a, a great experience with these headphones. For the next version, they could add HDMI 2.1 support and maybe a USB-C input rather than a micro USB. So those are my thoughts on these headphones. What are your thoughts on these headphones? Have you heard them? How do you think the sound quality is? Do you think it sounds like 7.1.4? Leave a comment down below and let me know your thoughts. As always guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. We'll see you guys again in the next video.